Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to the Ventura Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Bonnie Rose, and we have a special guest artist today, someone that I know from uh, both, uh, well, Northern California, India, and Jordan. And so let me introduce Nemo Patel, and he's going to talk a little bit about the song that we're going to sing. Yeah. And... <laughs> This song is called uh, Planting Seeds, and it's a special song for me because I uh, got a chance to make it with a good friend of mine, Daniel Namod, who you guys might know and um, may have heard of many of his songs. I had gone on a musical fast about 10 years ago, and then somehow it came back, this itch to want to write music, and Daniel's music was some of my favorites, and we synchronous synchronously met um, through a seed that Nipun had planted. He had, uh, our friend Nipun, had given me, gifted me his album. And later I asked Dan if we can do a hip hop remix of his song, Planting Seeds. And he's like, yeah, I've never done that before, but let's try. And so this is that song, Planting Seeds. And, and you guys are gonna have the opportunity to sing along. Um, the, the lyrics for the chorus are uh, on where we usually sing the hymn. So if you'd like to stand up, if you want to, then uh, we'll cue you when it's time to sing. <laughs> yeah. I spent a long time running, I never knew then what I know I know now. That the fruits, they always come in, but you can't go around just knocking them down. It takes a long time to show in, we plant the seeds then, we look at them now. But the roots are always growing, no matter if I'm there or never around. So feel free to sing along. Here we go. Whatever grows will grow. Whatever dies will die. Whatever works will work. Whatever flies will fly. Whatever fails will fail. What's meant to soar will soar. I am planting seeds. It's like your whole life you've been training for this moment and when the time comes you just disown it meaning you just surrender don't control it not interested in the clay pots and mold and sitting next to your path trying to unfold it or waiting for the fruits to fall down towards you let it go and now you're flowing feeling quite gorgeous you take steps away instead of towards it what a rush feeling freedom with nothing to hold we've been taught that what you touch will always turn to gold but now we're learning we let it go it overflows with no credit to take because no credit is owned a higher power working deeper when the seed are so when the seeds are true they're seeds of gold but the real gold is joy when life starts to flow when it does you just smile because now you know I spent a long time running never knew then what I know I know now that the fruits they always come in but you can't go around just knocking them down it takes a long time to show in we plant the seeds then we look at them now but the roots are always growing no matter if I'm there or never around so feel free to sing along. We're going to sing this three times together. Here we go. Three, two. Whatever grows will grow. Whatever dies will die. Whatever works will work. Whatever flies will fly. Whatever fails will fail. What's meant to soar will soar. I am planting seeds. Whatever grows will grow. Whatever dies will die, whatever works will work, whatever flies will fly, whatever fails will fail, what's meant to soar will soar, 
<laughs> Last time, here we go. Whatever. Yep. Let it grow, let it grow. If it dies, it dies. Come on. And when it works, it works. Woo! Let it fly, let it fly. When it fails, it fails. Come on, let it soar. We are planting seeds and nothing more. Thank you. Hey, thanks. And if you'd like to remain. And so it is, and so we allow it to be. As we breathe deeply and relax our bodies, becoming still to know what is revealed through the words of our sacred reading. A message for each and every one of us from Hafiz. You are the sun in disguise. You are God hiding from yourself. Remove all the mine. That is the veil. Why ever worry about anything? Listen to what your friend Hafiz knows for certain. The appearance of this world is a Magi's brilliant trick, though its affairs are nothing into nothing. You are a divine elephant with amnesia trying to live in an ant hole. <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> oh, sweetheart. You are God in disguise. And so recognizing this truth about ourselves, about all of us, no matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, we are God in disguise. And if it's true for us, if it's true anywhere, it is true everywhere. It is true for all beings. And so let us know this truth both individually and collectively. As we sing together, I am remembering who I am, knowing our God presence, this intimate, intimate friend intimate, infinite friend that we are. We sing together, I am remembering. <clears throat> I am remembering. Together we rest in the spaciousness of the I am presence as the I am presence. And knowing this is so, let us breathe in deeply and then exhale opening our eyes in love and in service to what is, as it is, and so it is. Remembering who we are was remembering that we are kindness, we are compassion, we are that love in action. This song is called Being Kind. Well, my heart starts sinking, and I'm thinking, what's the reason? Why are we holding back from being kind? What's the disease? But then I sense we are fine. It'll all happen one small step. When the world is full of violence and it needs a little kindness, I just sit and pray in silence, and God shows me the signs. Open my eyes, realize we are fine. Last night I'm walking home and a homeless man says hello with a smile to let me know that he's got a lot of hope. He says, have faith, young man, we are fine. The world is kind. 
small acts we do together, even though maybe alone changes the world for the better, so we can call it home and this is life as we know when our hearts are aligned, the magic that unfolds one small act at a time. Throw your hearts up, let it fly high, let your love for all the world spread through the skies, let it drop down, let it all go, spreading kindness through every single living soul. Can you see your love for me shining through? Cause what you see in me, I can see in you. And soon enough, you and me will be out of time. And kindness will be all we can leave behind. Feeling grateful today, never thought this day would come where I would feel it and say, each and every one of us have paved the way doing good and now, just moving up when i'm kind to you you pay it forward this is how we build trust never had faith but now i'm seeing you i i want to gift you my life want to spread love before i die thank you god for finally letting me realize when i serve man i'm really serving you in the sky smiles everywhere because now everybody's got the bug ain't no life without the love if it is there ain't no fun what we gonna do now just grab a friend and give a hug spread it out real wide so everyone can be touched throw your hearts up let it fly high, let your love for all the world spread through the sky. Let it drop down, let it all go, spreading kindness to every single human soul. Can you see your love for me shining through? Cause what you see in me, I can see in you. And soon enough, you and me will be out of time and kindness will be all we can leave behind. Oh, 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 all we can leave behind for you and I. Kindness is all we can leave behind. Behind, all we can leave behind for you and I. Kindness is all we can leave behind. Throw your hearts up, let it fly high. Let your love for all the world spread through the sky. Let it drop down, let it all go. Spreading kindness through every single living soul. Can you see your love for me shining through? Cause what you see in me, I can see in you. And soon enough, you and me will be out of time. And kindness will be all we can leave behind. Behind. All we can leave behind. When all is said and done, kindness is all we can leave behind. So um, I'm going to give a brief introduction, and then we'll bring Nemo back up here. But you can stay where you are for now. Just have a little beverage, relax, <laughs> OK? Um, so I, I think I, I shared when I first came out that I met Nemo in, in, uh, up in uh, Berkeley or Santa Clara at Nipun's house, I think. And um, got to know him a little bit then. And then when I was in India a couple of years ago, um, we really connected then. Went to the slums with, with Nemo several times. And I have to tell you that going into the slums with Nemo is like going into the slums with Jesus. Because you're, people love you there. You know, you're just like a celebrity. People just rush to you. And he's so loving and so friendly. And I just so admired that about him. And then this past year when I went to, uh, went to Jordan, um, I was very excited to learn that Nemo was going to be there doing a concert and that I was going to get to sing with him. Um, Nemo was sort of a rock for me in Jordan. Um, whenever I, we would be in a crowd of new people, I'd, I'd say to him, sit next to me, sit next to me. I have a little social anxiety, sit next to me. <laughs> so as you can see from his singing and from his presence, he's just a beautiful, beautiful soul. Um, I, I titled the service Inshallah because um, that means, uh, say it again in the, the real translation, Hugh. God, inshallah. God's will. 
if God wills, yeah, it's like thy will be done, if God wills in Arabic, because um, Nima will often end conversations where we're making plans, we'll go, inshallah, if God wills it. So it seems like that's part of how he lives his life. And let's find out more about that as we bring him to the stage. <laughs> I'm moving you a little farther away so we're not sitting on top of each other. <laughs> there we go. So, so um, Nemo, it's so good to see you. It's, it's so beautiful to be here, yeah. knowing that our last, my last memory of this place was crying <laughs> at, of, with joy. Yes. Um, you know, having our 17 children from those communities that Bonnie was sharing about actually be here and share and love and feel your guys' love and presence and of our horses and our animals <laughs> and what a magical Yes, experience. yes. Yeah. I forgot to mention that. So Nemo was part of the driving force behind the 17 children that we brought from India who did their show and then they had a, a church service and we also had, because we often do, we had a farm animal. There are no farm animals today, unless you want to yeah. count the rabbits outside. <laughs> yeah, we we'll count the rabbits. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but you, you are not always working in India in these underserved communities. Tell us what you were doing before that. Yeah, well, um, before that, you know, I went to business school and I had this vision from high school that I wanted to be like um, CEO of Warner Brothers. I have a passion for entertainment and so I, I chose to um, try to bridge the two and after college I was working in, in New York trying to, you know, hone up my, my corporate skills so that I could eventually get where I wanted to be. Um, yeah, and I pursued this kind of career of music, and then I had an animation studio eventually that I got a pretty good amount of funding for. Um, but I, it was in that point, I think, that um, I didn't feel good inside. And I was like so happy that even though everything on the outside was kind of nice and, and you know, hunky-dory in a way, I was listening to something, or something forced me to listen, and I mm -hmm. think it was through different elements of suffering that I went through in my life. Mm -hmm. um, that said, you have to listen to this voice, and and it and it and it led me to wanting to change it up and close everything, quit everything, give away everything I had. And I've been now at the ashram, the Gandhi ashram, for the last ten years, and it's just been the most beautiful um, journey so far. You know, yeah. of learning and growing as yeah. a human being. Was part of that suffering 9/11? Because I believe you mentioned when we were in Jordan that you were that you were living in New York near the financial district during 9/11. Yeah, yeah, I lived a block that. away from the trade centers. I worked in, I mean, there's the two twin towers, but there's seven trade center um, buildings, and I lived, I worked in the World Financial Center at that time. Um, our building also got hash, half demolished, and life changed after that for our whole world, for all of us as Americans, but also for a lot of us that were, uh, you know, closely hit. Um, and it really shifted the way I kind of saw life. Mm -hmm. And I think um, to, to realize, like, to ask myself, what am I really doing with this life? Because I don't know how long I have. Mm -hmm. You know, that question really came stronger mm -hmm. after seeing everything happen in front of me. You know. Mm -hmm. So when you ask that question, and, and you may notice that I'm uh, very much veering from the questions I told you I would ask, <laughs> <laughs> but you're, you're doing great. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so when you ask that question, what what am I what am I doing? What what, in, what did you want to do instead? Like, what, what was the driving force? What was, what was the inspiration or the vision that you started, that started developing for your life? Well, I think it's a, it's a, it's a great question. I, when, at that time, I was working at a financial company, mm -hmm. um, and I was, I was doing well, and, but yet when I had rooted at it, I was like, what am I actually doing mm -hmm. here? Making money and serving this company that his ultimate goal is to obviously just make more money. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where I was like, I don't know what the root of what I'm doing is here. So I think what I, my first step was to follow my heart, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was to quit and to pursue my passion of music. Uh -huh. And that's what I, that was my first kind of entanglement in, in kind of like moving away. Uh -huh. um, but then as I kept asking myself that question, what am I really doing? Then it also moved away from that. Because I realized that pursuing my passions, in my, in my story, was an ego-driven thing. Mm -hmm. Music was a, being an artist and an entertainer and making money. And, um, so then even the animation studio, I realized, was also something not... It wasn't fulfilling the root cause, which mm -hmm. was, how can I be of service while I am here, was the question I think I was, that was leading me um, to. Ah, nice. And, and so then I felt like, how do, how do we you know, get to that space of being an instrument of small? Yeah. 
Boy, that's really, you know, lately in my own spiritual development, I've been asking that question a lot too, and it seems like that is the solution for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, how can I be of service while I'm here? And not only here, but... Um, you know, when I, when I do these long flights, like to Jordan or India, yeah. I, I used to just dread being on a plane, and now I see it as like a little ashram, yeah. where I just look for opportunities to serve, and when the 16, hour, 16 hours is up, I'm like, oh, I'm not ready yet. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to leave. <laughs> Circle around the airport a few more times, right? So how do you find yourself serving there? Um, different things. I, I, usually, I often sit next to somebody who doesn't speak the same language as me. I often um, sit next to somebody who's too big for the seat, and um, has trouble dropping, you know, when they drop something, they yeah. can't pick it up, so I pick up. Small and things. I just, yeah, just little things like that. And, and, um, and often if somebody sits on a plane and they're, and they're too big for the seat, they, they enter grumpy, and I make it my life's mission in that 16 hours to, to get them to smile at something. I think that's, <laughs> it's, it's so powerful because that's it. Yeah. Which is like, how, how can we... Um, Spread, when we say how can we spread love, or yeah. it's this, it's yeah. love in action in these small ways. It is. And that. it changes the energy field. Yeah. Which transforms things at a much bigger level, which we don't need to know how it does, right. but it does. It changes. The ripple it, effects are, yes. are big. Yes, it changes it in a different energetic, and we just have to keep doing the right thing. Yes. Yeah. And the end, I know this is supposed to be about him, but here I am babbling no, 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 away. I, I, but, I like this. I like this yeah, way. This yeah. way better. <laughs> but the, you know, once I got back from Jordan, one thing that I discovered, I mean, I, we certainly both did a lot of service while we were there, but you know, the, the plane and the airport were really such an ashram feel for me. And then I'm like, oh, look, look how you're limiting your in intensity of service to a plane. Why can't it be in the grocery store? Yeah. Why can't it be at the DMV? You know, <laughs> why can't yeah. it be anywhere? You know, and that. yeah, and just having that capacity to, to just, instead of asking, what am I going to get from this? Or what do I yeah, need yeah. from this? What am I going to give from this? I don't practice it 100%, but no, you no, know. We're, well, you yeah. There's one thing that the visual that comes to mind um, as Bonnie shares, that is like wherever we walk in our day, mm -hmm. imagine there being like, some little pixie dust that follows us, right? And gets <laughs> dropped on the ground. And at the end of the day, you take a, a kind of telescopic or this view from this top, and you realize everywhere you've actually gone. It could just be in your house one day, but it could be to the grocery store, it could be to work, it could be to church. And that is our real estate to play and to, to give love to. Yeah. That's what we have access to every day. Yeah. And imagine all of us, all 200 of us here, and then you look at the pixie dust from all 200 of our day's journey, and if if we're all having this intention to just break out of it a little of our comfort zone and, and to touch, to be kind, to, to sacrifice a little more, how does that change our community? Yeah. Just us here. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's magical it's, what you're, that, that practice. Yes, it's so, you know. it's so inspiring. And yeah, I love the, the image of everybody spreading their pixie dust when, when often... <laughs> so I'm going to get gross here, because that's what I do. Often, <laughs> instead of, instead of, you know, you could either spread pixie dust or you could spread, like, dandruff or something, right? <laughs> but what if we were all just to commit to, to whatever that means for us? And, it, and my, my way doesn't need to look like anybody else's way or Nemo's way, but just right, to spread exactly. that, that, that light, that gold, that glitter, that pixie dust wherever we go. And then, I love your, your song, Planting Seeds. We don't need to see, see the results, mm. you know? It's just... Yeah. It's like people building the cathedrals in, in 1200. They, they never got to see the results, but they, they put one brick after one brick after one brick. We, we drop one pixie dust after pixie dust after pixie dust, and somehow, as you said, on a higher level, this higher order of wholeness emerges, and it's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. That's so important. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what you do now. Like what, I know you're, you're here visiting your parents for a while, but what yeah. do you do like in your, in your regular work cycle? Yeah, well, I, you know, I think six, seven months of my years in, in the Gandhi ashram where Mahatma Gandhi um, started this community space uh, after moving back from South Africa in India and we're luckily um, centered there. We work in um, underprivileged communities which are really tough environments. I think that the ones maybe are, when we came we shared a little about it with our children. Um, but we, we serve in, in various ways. Uh, we have a nonprofit there. We have 100, 100 full-time staff members, mm -hmm. and then a few of us uh, long-term volunteers that are helping, uh, you know, run the organization. And it's it's just it's so dynamic. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I love about life. There is, I think, um, when I was living my other life, I remember it being so like Monday through Friday. But as an entre entrepreneur, you're also like constantly you're you're thinking of the days and your and the time and 
over there, you just kind of get lost. Mm -hmm. And it, it could be working with our children. It could be visitors coming. It could be um, groups coming, wanting to get seeds of inspiration for their organization. Mm -hmm. um, you know, meditation and the spiritual journey is so important part of the process. Um, so there's, the day is so unique and dynamic, um, at least in the lens that I get to have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then the other five months, I'm, I'm getting a chance to go around the world and like we did. Yeah. Um, and try to b just be of service in small ways wherever I'm invited to, to bring music. A lot of schools. Mm -hmm. a lot of, I go to a lot of elementary schools across the world. Um, and I love children. I am a child. <laughs> and, and, I, and I was just having a conversation about that with a friend about how, um, I forget, where, where, somebody, yes, a dear <laughs> here. Um, just how important it is for us to never lose that inner child, you know. Right. Right. So, yeah, life is good. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and it's, it's been a blessing. And in here with mom and dad for the next, uh, next few weeks before I head back to India. Back to India, yeah. yeah. Um, so I had the experience of walking into the slum communities with you, and I said it was like walking in, into the slums with Jesus, which I think might have embarrassed you. Yeah, that's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but, not very likely. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't really know what he was like, so, yeah. you know. Yeah, but, he was um, cool. Okay. He was cool, yeah. <laughs> He's a rapper. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he was a rapper, too, you know? Who knows? <laughs> um, but why do, you, why do you think people resonate so strongly with you? Why do they why do they flock to you when you when you walk into the slum community? You know, I don't know if I don't know if that's the case first of all, but well, um, and, what I, but I saw it in Jordan too. I think it's universal. What I what I do realize is that um, the families that I've had a chance to serve with in the communities um, maybe are used to seeing the world from two lens. Like we are here, and then there are people here helping us. And for me, I think it's so important in service that it is not like. Uh, a looking down or looking up. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's my, those are my brothers and sisters. Yeah. And I don't see them in any other, yeah, in practical terms, I, I go back to my apartment and I go to sleep. But from a heart space, from a deep intention, mm -hmm. um, they really are my kids. Yeah. They really are my brothers and sisters. They really are my moms and dads. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, it's that cultivation, that practice that I want to keep working on, mm -hmm. to see that the world as my family, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not to see any lines in between. Wow. You know. Yeah. So. so to see the world as your family, and not to see any lines in between, whether they're rich, poor, homeless, yeah. um, have an appearance of an illness. Um, I just visited a retirement home where people did not look like they were in great shape, but they were my brothers and sisters too, all of that. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. And that's, and that's part of the, um, the con it seems like the connection that gets, um, that gets stirred when, when you're with folks. Um, the other thing that I've noticed about you, Nemo, um, again, veering very far away from, <laughs> whatever, <you laughs> from whatever I had about. planned to discuss, <laughs> yeah, yeah, is um, that your ability to tolerate um, chaos is incredible. Now, I, now, you may not even called it chaos, but I know when we walked into that, that place where the, the, um, the refugee kids were staying, <laughs> and you gave me the heart pins, and you said, hand them out, and, and afterwards, I'm like, they're all over me, they're all over me. <laughs> I don't know what to do, and, and you, just, you just took it and went with it. It was great. How, can you, how is it that you handle um, chaos so well? <laughs> good, uh, good question. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah I think I, maybe I'm not seeing the chaos. It, it might not. be, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. probably just I, like I think you. I think it's it's uh, it's always a good practice. Yeah. Right when we get when we're in um, that type of environment or energy, to 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 try to you really uh, use it as an opportunity for our for our own growth. Really, you know. And I feel like that for me is is for sure. I mean, I think working with a lot of kids yeah. in India. Yeah. Um, has been a, a, a great a great tool in that, but I I think meditation for me has has been my guiding light. Yeah. Um, to to try practice equanimity. Yeah. Um, in all <laughs> in all situations, whatever they be, and there are there are times I remember, I'm very I feel like I'm very aware of my sensations. Right. So when I do get into a space of turbulence, mm -hmm. it's beautiful because it's like wow, a lot of work still needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just that life journey, right? Yeah. About, yeah. Constantly trying to, um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Find that so that, you know, it could be more of a, 
a joyous and peaceful and, ride. Yeah. And thank you for putting words to, to that because that's so much of what we teach here is that, that um, you know, you are going to get turbulent. There, you are going to be stirred by chaos. And, and to look at that as a great opportunity to do, to do more work. The other day I was having, well, the other day I was having um, lunch with somebody and we were talking about this universal condition called shame. And, and I said something to the effect of, you know, I've learned to be proud of my shame because, <laughs> which is a paradox, it's an oxymoron, which, you know, is like my favorite thing in the whole world. Um, but it's like, it's like if, if I'm seeing shame, it's a beautiful thing because A, it helps me understand the shame of other people. If I'm seeing shame within myself, it helps me understand the shame of other people, which we are constantly projecting onto others, which is, I think, part of the reason the world is in, is in sort of a state. But also, if I'm seeing shame in myself, I can celebrate that there's some work, some beautiful discovery of self-beauty and insight that needs to be, that needs to be revealed or that's, that's seeking, that's longing to be revealed. I wouldn't be feeling the shame unless something else wanted to emerge. So I offer that to all of us as a practice over the holidays, you know, when there's um, sometimes shame comes up over the, over the, the Christian, the Judeo-Christian holidays, of, I didn't get what I wanted, <laughs> you know, I gave the wrong thing, I'm too busy, all of that stuff. Yeah. It's just such a beautiful, you know, trying to be perfect in, in the holidays. It's just such a beautiful practice. So yeah. Thank I, you for yeah, no, it's great. It's putting great. words to that. Yeah. Being vulnerable is great and it, being aware of it. It's the and best. Then, and then, yeah. it's not easy, but yeah, yeah. I always, I always tell people it's my superpower. Being, being yes. vulnerable, yeah, being vulnerable and being willing to acknowledge when I'm um, being less than what the stereotype of a science of mind person should be doing. Right? <laughs> this is how I feel, this is how I should be feeling. Well, let's go with how I actually yeah. feel and, and work with that. I think the most powerful thing about it, aside from our own growth, mm -hmm. is that we get, we're, we're opening it up to everyone around yes, us absolutely. to grow and yeah. to, to come to their own. And that's the, versus being so perfect or trying to that right. that becomes a very egoistic thing in, in and of itself and and all of us around each other feel like oh wait no i gotta be like that gotta <laughs> yeah be like that, you know? so luck. i think thank you yeah yeah no That's, thank you and, and it's, it, it also it it speaks to forgiveness which to me is is just the the one of the antidotes for everything is forgiveness and vulnerability you know and humility it's, it's the 12 steps it's so it's so much that is so so beautiful yeah. I could talk about this forever, but I did have another really specific question for you, which was not on the list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. of course. Um, yeah, so... Um, I already deleted that email. <laughs> yeah, good, good for you. <laughs> I think I'm sitting on it, but I should just tear it up, yeah. Um, so, you know, when, when you brought... It's, uh, for those of you who weren't here, um, Nemo brought seven... And others, Nemo and other leaders brought 17 children from uh, this underserved community in India. And they did this beautiful show. And when they came into our center, it was like there was this influx of love. There was like this cloud of love that descended on the center. And, and we talked about that afterwards and said, wow, we want to we continue to cultivate in a, in that in our youth. We're certainly working on it with our youth. But... Um, Somebody was saying, somebody wise who knows a lot about children, <laughs> was saying, um, you know, those children have had a lot invested in them, a lot of goodness invested in them. And we noticed even like when we went to Disneyland, you know, we'd get food and, and um, the volunteers would sit down and be like, hey, let's eat. And the kids would be singing in uh, prayer, prayer yeah, yeah. singing a prayer before they ate. So tell us a little bit about the investment that, um, that you have that you and, and the staff and the volunteers have made in those children so that we can do the same and continue to deepen our oh, investment. That's a beautiful question. Yeah. Um, when we do a tour like that, something at that level, um, the, all, the, all the audience that comes to a show, for example, they see the tip of an iceberg. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for me personally, if we didn't get visas, which they were bound to happen because of the magic of all our family, <laughs> uh, the journey would have been complete, uh -huh. just where we were. Um, so if you, let me just clarify that. If, you, if, if the Indian government did not let you go to the States, or, the US or around, embassy the US, did not, US or, embassy. The, or the British High Commission yeah. didn't give us visas, visas, we wouldn't have been able to come out here, right. which was a big tour that we had all collectively been planning, right. and that would have been fine. It would have been Except fine. for, you know, like all the investment and time that I felt bad that all our volunteers, that all of you had made. But it would have been fine because that was not the point. The point was to walk on a path together with these children, day in, day out, to not perform a show about this idea that we are a family of one, not to perform a show about courage and compassion and service, 
but to try our best to practice it mm -hmm. at a day-to-day -day level. So it's awesome because for me, it's, it really, the creative process is 40%. Mm -hmm. Though I know on a production level, it should be 99 to 100%, but for me, it's 40 to 30%. And 60 to 70% is how are we as human beings evolving together as a family as we create this production. And that involves, like you said, a family of mentors, mm -hmm. which was actually the first step for, for me and our trustees was let's pick a team that we feel could be mentors for these children. Before we picked the children, actually, mm -hmm. before the 17 kids were picked, mm -hmm. it was knowing that we needed a team of mentors that can help guide this journey. Mm -hmm. After we collect, you know, picked that team, then it was this selection of children, and then through that, it was a day-to-day -day process of, for example, small things, like when we would have practice, I would say 30 40, 40 to 50% of our time is creatively practicing. Mm -hmm. The other 50, 60 is, is prayer, circle of sharing, cleaning, um, helping one another, because every kid has their story. Mm -hmm. All of us have stories, but our children come from challenging spaces where their stories go a little deeper, probably, mm -hmm. in terms of... So how do we unravel and uh, provide a safe space so all these stories are coming out mm -hmm. so that we can then start massaging each other's lives together, working with each other, and supporting this journey as brothers and sisters together? Mm -hmm. That's the journey. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we're growing no matter what, whether we perform our show or not, we are growing as right. human beings. Oh, that, tell kind of tell about after the show, you know, they used to, they used, they used to run out and greet the public. Oh, and, yeah. and what happens now? Yeah, <laughs> so in the first few shows, which LA was our first show, um, we realized that, you know, after the performance, you know, the LA show, we had maybe, I think, 1,400, 1,500 people there. And everybody was deeply touched, so they all want to connect with the kids after the show. And we want our kids to connect with the audience. But what we realized after a few shows was that that was also unhealthy for the grounding of the journey, because we're gonna go back to our environments a month and a half later. And our children need to be coming back to India very softly, gently, instead of going off a cliff. <laughs> like seeing all of these amazing things and being treated like royalty, and then being back, bam. So for us, one of a small practice was like after the show, right after the show, we're packing our bags. We're stuffing the uh, costumes, all the props, we had, you know, about 12 or 14 big bags of prop, cops and prost, uh, props and costumes. <laughs> and, and it was about organizing that as a team. And until we're all collectively done, then we can go out and connect with community and family. And it was awesome because the kids digested that. They understood why we needed to do that and how important it is for themselves and their own development and discipline. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that became a very powerful... It might have allowed them not to see as many people actually mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it gave them i think the the type of uh ethics and work uh habits that they needed to take away something this for their you know in their lives yeah, so, yeah that was really important it part. was really Small important. things like that yeah one of the one of the reasons i like you so much is that is that you really do a lot of things that are somewhat out of the box of normal thinking you know that that many many performers would not um, pack up 70 costumes and then greet the audience, yeah. you know, it's really, it's really wonderful. Yeah, no, thank you. I've got two more questions for you. Yeah, oh, yeah. we're running a little yeah, late, but I've got, time. yeah, we're almost out of time. <laughs> but um, the first one is, um, so I, we did call this service Inshallah because oh, you, yeah. you say that a lot. Why? How's that showed up? <laughs> yeah, how's that shown up for you? You know, it's like, the, the two tallest buildings in the world fall down right in front of you, and you're running from these buildings. And the day before, I literally booked a flight to Milan for my sister and myself that my company was treating me. I walked through the Trade Center courtyard, and there were summer concerts still happening. And I go home, and the next morning, I'm jolted with an earthquake, and then I look outside and everything. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Who knows? We have no clue what the next moment holds for us. Right. So I feel so audacious and arrogant to think that I'm gonna be returning home today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope to see mom and dad later today, mm -hmm. but I can never say that I will see you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's just, for me, it's not even the right way to think, it's just what I feel in my heart that it, it truly is not in my hands. Right. And so inshallah, 
is in, in the Muslim world, it's so beautiful because even in Jordan, you must have heard every, almost every sentence they fin finish with, inshallah. Mm -hmm. They say, yeah, nice to meet you. See you soon, inshallah. And it's just like very, very simple for them to realize mm -hmm. that it's not up to us. It's up to God will decide whether we meet again, mm -hmm. you know. And, mm -hmm. and for me, I, I really appreciate that part of, of their religion and their thought process and that kind of constant reminder that this is not in my hands. Look forward to seeing you, if, if that may be, if yeah. God wills, you know. Yeah, and I see how much freedom. Some people might think that that is a, um, an act of... Um, Oh, I don't know, obedience to some higher, <laughs> higher external being, but it's such a, it's such a step into greater freedom, yeah. into the freedom to know that there's something greater than the smaller self that is orchestrating everything. And, and why do we really why fight it? Yeah. Let's, just, <laughs> yeah. let's just go with it and, yeah, see, yeah, yeah. and see what wonders are wrought through that. And it's so that. humbling. It's yes. so humbling yeah. to constantly remember that yeah. know, we're, we're such a beautiful, tiny speck of dust in this multiverse, mm -hmm. and yet we are so amazing and magnificent yes. all at the same time but to, yes. to make sure both of those go together yes yeah. they both go go together it's it's another paradox yeah. my favorite thing <laughs> yeah 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 okay one more question yeah. if you have any assignment or word of advice for this congregation uh, as to how we can how we can for further us, for, for for all of us for yeah for all of us, for, yeah, for yes, all of for us. Sure. any how how can we um, support the values that you are that you are putting out into the world through your work with the children through the music through your inner through your day-to-day -day interactions through your sprinkling of pixie dust how can we support that wow yeah I love that I love that um, I, I feel like the definition of family for all of us um, many times has, you know, some type of boundary, naturally, mm -hmm. right? Because we're born in a home and we get to know that, and our community grows and we get to, and that's our community. I, I feel like, how can we expand that circle a little more every phase in our lives? Mm -hmm. It could be a daily basis where we take an experiment to just smile at somebody that probably, you know, because it's not about that action, actually. It's about the expansion of our heart. And when that keeps opening, I feel like that's the work we can do. Yeah. What actions come out of that is, it, it's, it's very, it doesn't matter. Because when the heart opens, the actions are going to be good for the world. Yeah. They're going to be good for other beings, other human beings, other community. So I think that idea of how can we take little experimental steps to expanding what it means that our family is who, you know, um, I think that helps move us towards spreading, spreading love in, in, in subconscious, unconscious, and conscious yeah. ways, you know. It's so, that's so beautiful because as the heart opens, it leads to actions, and if the actions are from an open heart, then that leads to an open heart, you know, it becomes this circle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's beautiful. how I think violence or, or uh, points of conflict are transmuted and transformed. Yeah. It's, it's through that constant, like, nope, that's fine, I'm just going to shine my light here, I'm going to Breathe deeply and let that person forgive right. and yeah. keep moving. And that's, yeah. I think that's, that's how the world is shifting and will shift constantly. And we, ha we, are, the, we are the warriors of that light. Yeah. You want to hear one of my spiritual secrets yes. that nobody knows? except for maybe one or two people here in this congregation. We're lucky. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. yeah, don't tell anyone though. <laughs> okay. no. um, so when, it, when you have a dog that um, is frightened or aggressive, sometimes you put them in a thunder shirt. You know what a thunder shirt is? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a wrap that you put around them, and it presses on their sympathetic nervous system. And so if somebody is in distress in my presence, um, if I can, yes, I, will, I will literally thunder shirt Aww. them and just hold them really tight. And if, I, if I'm not in a position to do that, I will psychically, mentally mm. thunder shirt them and just hold them tight and know that, that love prevails, that love prevails. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. So you can, I give you... Um, I bless you with the wisdom of thunder shirting. <laughs> All of us? I bless you with the wisdom of thunder shirting. <laughs> yes. Nemo, oh, well, thank you. this has been so wonderful. We're going to have you sing in just a minute, but I'm going to do a prayer first, okay? Thank so, you so much. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> yeah. Thank thunder you. shirt. Thunder shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, so turning within. Let me just tear up this list first. <laughs> Turning within and just trusting and knowing that there is this one perfect spirit that is one family, that is the family of love or the family of God or whatever, whatever name we want to use. Absolute reality, peace, joy, 
Whatever it is, it is here and we are one with it. And so I absolutely recognize this oneness right now and I call it my own and as I do that, I know that, that we are all doing the same. We are all knowing on some level this oneness that we all share with all of existence. And so from this place, we take the words and the, the music and the fellowship that has happened today and we incorporate those things into our lives. We know that we are ever making steps to a deeper realization where we are completely and wonderfully vulnerable and open and forgiving and thunder shirting and just loving what is and moving into the space of the will of love always. I know this changes our lives on the inside and it changes our lives on the outside too. And so we are just so very blessed to have loving, living support in examples of one another and in holding each other in this beautiful, beautiful space. And so I'm grateful, just so grateful for the truths that have been spoken here through the truths that have been shared and the truths that will continue to re reveal themselves in the coming week as we digest this information and apply it personally to our lives. I am grateful for this teaching and for this beautiful spiritual center. I bless all paths to God, churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, fundamentalists, atheists, agnostics. I bless everyone for everyone is a blessing. Everyone is part of the divine family. And with a heart that is so filled with blessedness, I say, thank you, spirit. Thank you, love. And I release these words into the mystery. And together we say, and so it is. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. song is called Grateful. We're grateful to be here and to be alive. Thank you. You're my life. You're my breath. You're a smile. You're my guest. You're the earth. You're the sun. You're the grass. You are love. You're my hands. You're a bug. You're my eyes. You're a hug. You're the light in the dark. You're the spark. You are fun. You're my mom. You are water. You're the stars. You're my daughter. You're my friend to the end. You're my dreams. You're my father. You're the ants on the ground, the miracles that surround. I'm feeling it all around, the hemisphere in the clouds. You're my pain. You're my sorrow. You're my hope for tomorrow. You're the step that I've hollow. You're the path that I follow you the blessings that exist the small things that are bliss the gift to realize everything is a gift all that I see all that I feel and all that I'll ever be is a blessing it's so amazing and I'm grateful for it all for it all na 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 for it you're the blessings every time I try to count. You're the lessons that I learn every time I turn around. You're the water when I'm burned. Every time I think I found everything I'm looking for. You're the sign saying stop to take a bow and keep moving forward and start looking towards your heart. It'll open all the doors and only then you'll start to hear the world singing chorus with your mind and heart. Align and purpose, everything will feel gorgeous. All that I see. All that I've been and all that I'll ever be is a blessing. It's so amazing. And I'm grateful for it all. Every day I sit and pray because what I have is more than I deserve or could ever imagine. How do I give back to all of this magic and spread the love so everybody can have it? Doesn't matter if I'm rich or poor, if I got a family or if I'm all alone. Bad things happen, I can just complain and moan. Or there's a million things that I can be grateful for. So we lift up our hands. And we open our hearts to the world. And our gratitude goes out to everything near and far sing along all that i am everything i am 
everything I see, everything I hope, and everything I dream, everything I feel, and everything I be. I look deep down and feel all the blessings, everything I am, and everything I see, everything I hope, and everything I dream, everything I feel, and everything I be. I'm grateful for it all. Yep. Woo! Everything I am and everything I see, everything I hope and everything I dream, everything I feel and everything I be. I look deep down and feel all the blessings, everything I am and everything I see, everything I hope and everything I dream, everything I feel and everything I be. I'm grateful for it all. It's a blessing. How did I see? All that I've been and all that I'll ever be is a blessing, it's so amazing, and I'm grateful for it all. One more time, here we go. All that I am, all that I see, all that I've been and all that I'll ever be is a blessing. It's so amazing, and I'm grateful for it all, for it all. Na 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 Grateful for it all. Na 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 You're the blessings that exist, the small things that are bliss, the gift to realize everything is a gift. Thank you. Thank you.